Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the HPE ProLiant DL580 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically cover processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're gonna cover CPU, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives, RAID, NIC, how to put it in a rack, how to install Windows Server operating systems, plus a whole bunch more. Click that like, smash that subscribe. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HP ProLiant DL580 Gen 9 server. In this video, as I mentioned, we're going to specifically focus on processors. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over the general specs of the processors and the socket itself on what's compatible. We're going to show you the procs that we recommend, and we break it down into three categories, low-end, value, and high-end, and we'll give you some options there as well. And then at the very end, we're going to show you how to physically install the processors and show you step-by-step -step instructions of the whole way. So let's go ahead and hop into the fun stuff. All right, let's go over the general specs. There are four CPUs inside. The socket is an LGA2011 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon E7 4800 V3 or V4, or E7 8800 V3 or V4. Those are the procs that are compatible. Sometimes we'll get asked if you can put in the E5 series, which is also an LGA 2011-3, but no, they are not compatible. You will need to have the E7 4800 or 8800 V3 or, or V4 series processors. That is what is compatible. One other thing I wanted to note is that while this processor series as a whole is a pretty good processor series, you have some, uh, they're cheap, and you have some uh, processors that are up to 24 cores, so you could put four 24 core procs in here, which makes this, again, a very, very beefy system for very, very cheap, but the one downfall for the procs is the max RAM speed, and we'll get into this a little bit more in the RAM video, but the max RAM speed is 1866, which makes it sound more of a, like a DDR3 box than a DDR4 box, and it is a DDR4 box, so that is the one downfall the one downfall for these procs. All right, so now we're gonna show you the CPUs that we recommend. We get asked all the time, hey, what, uh, what CPUs do you like? What do you put in these machines when you build them? And of course, it depends on your application and what you're using it for, but we try to find a nice little sweet spot. So we've given a nice range here. We break down to three categories. We have our low-end procs, our value procs, and our high-end procs. And really the name says that all the low-end are gonna be procs that are just gonna be cheaper and gonna be on the low end of the scale as far as the specs. The value are, are generally your nice sweet spot where it's not gonna break the bank, but you still get really good specs. And the high-end are gonna be basically the best of this series as a whole. But the nice thing about this is even the high-end procs aren't too, too crazy nowadays. This is an older box, it is a Gen 9, so you're not gonna have to break the bank really with any of the options. But let's start with the low end. All right, so the first three are going to be the E7 4820 V4, the E7 4830 V4, and the E7 4850 V4. That's gonna be a 10 core, 14 core, 16 core, 2.0, 2.0, and 2.1. Those are gonna be your specs. Those are gonna be very, very cheap procs as a whole. And you still get you know good specs, but those are on the low end side. And so now we'll tell you the value ones we recommend. All right, so the next three with the value, we're gonna go from the E7 4800 series to the E7 8800 series, and it's gonna be the E7 8860 V4, the E7 8867 V4, and the E7 8870 V4. Those are gonna be our next three for the value. That's gonna give you two 18 cores and a 20 core, gonna be 2.1, 2.4, and 2.0. Those are gonna be your specs overall. Uh, the 67 we like just for the speed. You get that 2.4 paired with the 18 cores, which is very nice. Um, but if you want a little bit more on the cores, you can hop up to the 70 and get the 20 cores. So again, a bunch of great value options here that don't break the bank and are gonna be good, good specs overall, especially if you drop four of them in. All right, so now let's talk about the high-end procs. This is my favorite section for this machine as a whole because truly the high-end procs right now are the real value. They won't break the bank. Uh, most of the time, the value procs are the sweet spot, but right now, uh, the high-end procs are the true sweet spot. So uh, let's go over the ones we recommend. There are three. There is the E7 8880 V4, the E7 8890 V4, and the E7 8894 V4. That's gonna be 22 core, 24 core, 24 core, 2.2 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz, and 2.4 gigahertz. So again, great procs, not gonna break the bank. And if you drop four 24 core procs in here, uh, this is just gonna be a, a really, really beefy machine. And you can get it at 2.4 gigahertz, which isn't the fastest overall, but when you have that many cores, that's still uh, for an older machine gonna be a great value overall. So, all right, now that we know more about the procs we recommend, let's show you how to install them. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're just gonna push our button, pop out our latch, and we're gonna pull the front out. So this is all we're gonna need to do. So we're just gonna slide this out right now. 
And when you get to this point right here, you're gonna notice that there's two blue buttons on the side. So I'm gonna push these two blue buttons and now this will slide all the way out. All right, so I've set this down. So I wanted to show you the blue button so you, now that we have a better angle. So there's this blue button on each side and those are the buttons that we push to physically pull it out that will release it. So now I'm gonna spin this around to get you a better angle here. So we are gonna be working on our four CPUs and all we're gonna to need to do to remove this top is there's this clip where it's gonna push this in. This will slide out and you're just gonna lift this straight up. And now we physically have access to our four CPUs. All right, so we have this is CPU one or processor one, processor two, processor three, processor four. So if you were installing them, that would be the order that you would do it. Um, we're gonna start over here with processor one. Now there's two different types of, of bits that I got here. Uh, the T20 bit, which is going to be more of your star bit. And then just a regular old flathead because the flathead actually works a little bit easier. So the uh, the bit will work and it'll, it'll go through, but I'm always worried about stripping it because it does that exact thing right there. Whereas the flathead, I just feel like actually works a little bit better, which is kind of funny, given that there is a star bit on there. Um, I don't know why they would have it set up to do both. So all right, we're going to go ahead and start to remove our heat sinks. So just two screws is all that you have on this one. And they are big heat sinks. So we're just gonna lift this off now. And you will see we have some old thermal paste that we'll need to clean off before we reinstall our new CPU. All right, so we've got our rag. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe off our heat sink, get it nice and clean. So now it's good to go. All right, so we have a CPU tray to remove our old CPU and put it onto the tray. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we are going to, you know what, actually, just in case, um, sometimes I'll go ahead and remove the proc, but just to be safe, let's go ahead and just clean up some of the thermal paste. There's not a ton, but we'll just go ahead and make sure that we get our area nice and clean before we take it out uh, so that way it doesn't flake off anywhere and uh, land anywhere else into the socket or to the motherboard itself. So we'll just quickly clean this off got you know probably 95% of it so we're good so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this latch and we're just gonna push this down and push this over one thing I do want to note for this specific model this latch is in there really tight so if you push it it'll spring out so just know that and be a little bit careful that it can come flying up so we're just gonna push this down and over all right and now we're gonna do the exact same thing over here we're gonna push this down and that way so let's just go ahead and push this one down Okay, so now when we raise this up, it just pops right open. So I'll show you that again because it happened kind of fast. As soon as this latch lifts up right here, it's going to pop up. And now we have complete access to our CPU. And we can just take our CPU and you're going to lift it straight up. And I really kind of emphasize this lifting it straight up because if you drag a corner, you can wipe out a few of the pins and you definitely don't want to damage any of your pins. So just lift it straight up. So we're going to go ahead and grab it right here and come straight up. We'll put it in our CPU tray to keep the CPU safe. So now what we're going to do is we are upgrading this one this is going to be an E78891 V4, which is also a really good proc. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. Well, one of the questions, let's say you took that out too fast and you were like, wait, which direction does this go? Well, the, easy and, uh, the easiest way to show you is this corner right here has a gold triangle on it. And this gold triangle is gonna go in the corner right here. So that's the easiest way to, to tell you in advance if you're not sure. So now what we're gonna do is simply just set this straight down. And I will emphasize again about the coming straight down because you don't want to damage any pins. So the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is close this up and put our thermal grease on it. So we're just gonna close this, put this one down first so it locks our latch in. So we're just gonna go ahead and push this down. All right, now that our CPU is in, we're just going to close this down. 
you're going to use this latch first because you want this to close the latch right here. So we're just going to go ahead and push this down. And then once that comes down, we're just going to do this one next. And same deal, we're just going to come down. And then get this one in and everything is nice and tight in there. So we're just going to go ahead and grab our thermal paste. And for the thermal paste, we're just going to put a nice little bit in the middle. And I put a little bit extra on the sides for these because they do run a little bit hot, but nothing too, too crazy. Just enough to keep this uh, nice and cool. And we don't want to uh, make a total mess because if you get uh, thermal paste everywhere, especially on this model of CPU, you could easily get it into all the capacitors uh, on the green board around it. Um, so that's about as much as I would want to do. So now we're just going to simply reinstall our heatsink. So one of the things I want to note about the heatsink, you'll notice there's two holes on the bottom. These holes are going to line up with the two pegs and then you're going to have the two screw holes and that's how you're going to line everything up. So we're just going to want to slide this right on in. Okay, so we've got it into place and now we just need to tighten this, the heat sink down. And I'm only going to do partial over here and then I'm going to get this side going. Now that one's fully on, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off. And it's nice and tight. And that's it. We've upgraded our processor. Now do it three more times, and this baby will be good to go. Hey, if you made it this far, click that like and smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom-built servers, HPE, Dell, Supermicro, Lenovo, Cisco, we do new and we do use. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.